pass, just keep it on the pavement. That was the cr crew chief for Marcus Ambrose. Tell him you got plenty of fuel, just keep it on the pavement. <laughs> Gary Cogswell talking to Marcus. Gary Cogswell's been a part of a lot of different drivers getting their first win. Here's a 66 car. Stephen Wallace out of fuel with two to go. I got a feeling we're going to litter the racetrack with cars running out of fuel here because we've had so many green flag laps. Yeah, providing they all make it back and don't get stopped on the racetrack somewhere. That could bring up a whole nother That could scenario. bring up a green-white checker, which could put a lot of people in trouble on fuel. It was a year ago at Montreal. Everyone thought Marcus, uh, the one of the most likable drivers in the garage area, would get his first win. He gets tapped from behind by Robbie Gordon, and the win goes away. This year at Mexico City, he was the uh, center of controversy because he got some contact with Boris Sedd. And he ended up finishing second. He finished third last week at Montreal. There's the uh, Stephen Wallace car pulling off on the grass as we stay green with two laps to go. Actually coming to the white flag this lap. So we've got debris on the racetrack laying around. and That's okay. Marcus Ambrose just took the white flag. The next flag you'll see will be the checker. Will there be no green-white checker here? Fran Keaty looking racy, trying to make a move around Harvick. Harvick looks to the inside of Kenseth. Again, that's second, third, fourth, and fifth. Final lap, JTG Doherty Racing. Tad Geschechter. Brad Doherty, the co-owners on the 59 car. How special would this be for Marcus Ambrose? All the way from Tasmania, little island just below Easy Australia. now, easy now. Boris didn't catch him, catch him uh, cut him any slack at all here. No love loss. Remember, it was Boris said, who said, I will get even. Remember, he was very angry after what happened in Mexico City, and Marcus Ambrose needs to tiptoe here. I believe I'd just follow him to the check. Yeah, there's no reason to pass him. He's got plenty of cushion back there. These guys aren't going to catch him from behind unless Boris just acts, stops. Kyle Busch trying to reel him in. Turn 10. The caution. That's it. That's it. Race is over. 59 car. Marcus Ambrose. How about that? Gary Cogswell celebrates on the pit box. The Marcus Wigo, guys. And Marcus, yeah. Marcus Ambrose goes to victory lane for the first time in his career at Watkins Glen. Yeah, that's a pretty special day. He did a terrific job, and they played the strategy perfectly. Caution was for the 66 on the course, and uh, that was the reason for the flag. Marcus Ambrose, very popular among the drivers in the garage area, always has a smile on his face. Way to go, mate! <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't believe it, man. What a day. We broke the back of that duck, man. We're away. Woo! Great job, guys. Each lap. I didn't want this. Each lap, 2.45 miles. Two to go. He gave it all he had off turn 11. Yeah, actually, it cost him a little bit of time there. While these guys try and figure out what's happening back a little further, and you can see the gap now is back to 1.1 seconds. Let's go back to that uh, exciting moment when we had the sequence coming up through the, the S's. This is the, probably the best path I've ever seen through this section of this track. Runs him off the track in that corner. He comes back on and still does not have the preferred line through turn two and still makes the pass. <laughs> wow. Say what you want. The That's driver of that 18 can handle the wheel. Right now, he's got to find something and find it fast. It's 1.1 second the difference. Yeah, and you know, last week he said, you know, he really wasn't that impressed with that record that he's tied about finishing first or second but that was a pass that told me that yeah he does have he does something care. to prove you know he does really care about that because he's up in that second spot again you know the last few laps we've had so much of the attention up white front. flag as we get the white flag we'll let you know Try the best one more bud one more the best nationwide only driver brad keselowski right now in 10th and it's right now, as we're looking a little bit further back, Kevin Harvick taking a peek. No, he's not going to be able to do anything with the 99 on this corner. Yeah, talk about a couple of other guys that are going to come back from Keselowski back there. Joe Nemechek's had a great day. He's in 11th, and J.R. Fitzpatrick back in 12th. Two guys really having good runs. 
Right now, it's all about Marcus Ambrose, though. It looks like he's going to win here for the second year in a row through the bus stop chicane. Kyle just doesn't have enough for him. It's going to take a mistake by Marcus. Uh, he hadn't made any, so that's gonna, hard to believe he's going to make one here in these next couple of turns. Just uh, following up with what he did last year and uh, putting himself in a position to win both races this weekend, guys. Yeah, he's got a great cup car, too. We got it, boys. <laughs> Don't celebrate too soon. You still got two corners to go. Whoa, oh, Dima check goes these around. These are two guys we were talking about having great runs, too. Coming through turn number 11, the final time for the second year in a row, Kangaroo Me. You are the man. Marcus. You are the man. Ambrose wins. Woo! Is that it? Is you worth it? Proud to work with the best in the world, man. You see the top five. There's Jeff Burton in sixth. All the way through Biffle, Reagan, Brad Keselowski, Scott Speed. We can tell you he had to stop. He blew the chicane. So that's why he fell back on that last lap. We didn't get a chance to see that. And uh, Kyle goes on past. I don't know. I didn't see if there was any words exchanged. or I don't know if there were. I doubt it was congratulations if it was. <laughs> I don't think Marcus Ambrose too much cares at this point. No, absolutely not. He won the race, did a great job of driving that car all day long. He's dialing that brake balance over there. See his right hand. He's getting ready for his <laughs> burnout. He's taking all the rear brake out of it so he can spin those rear tires. Let's go back up front, check in. as uh, That is Kenny Wallace going a lap down. And the battle for second continues with Joey Logano and the 33 of Kevin Harvick right behind him. They're running identical lap times. A couple of tenths faster. Oh, no. Ryan Newman's blown a tire here. Oh, the second one we've seen today. Is this going to bring out a caution? Well, it did the first time because there was literally shredded Got tire. Here, guys. This one's coming apart. He was running ninth. Going to try and make it to pit road. He's down on the inside. Everybody should be able to go around him, and they do. Meanwhile, the battle for second. Boy, Joey's really pushing it through there, and Harvick's right on his back bumper. Next time by, there'll be one lap remaining. I think Harvick knows in this position his best chance is just to try to get on that bumper, make Logano make some slight, slight mistake to where he can take advantage of it here. Okay, Ambrose looking for that white flag. Watch out, Joey. He's just waiting for you to make a mistake. Here you go, bud. White flag. They're going to really good off of turn seven. That's a big help as you go down to turn one. 2.45 miles to go for Marcus Ambrose. He has a three and a half second lead. This is the best battle on the track right now for second. They both. Whoa, and look out. Harvick goes wide. That's probably all the gun needed right there. Just a little gap. He gathered it up nicely. Because we were seeing the side of that race car, and that's never good on that head-on shot. Down the back stretch, there goes Marcus. He is cruising. And Joey is breathing a little bit easier. Through the bus stop for the final time. Little lap traffic. Joe Nemechek there in front of him. Don't think it's going to be a major factor, though. Nothing else been able to slow him down today. Well, Marcus Ambrose wants to lay claim to Watkins Glen because this is going to be another stellar performance for him here. He's going to join Terry Labonte as the second driver ever to win three straight here at Watkins Glen. Terry did it back in 94, 95, and 96 and through the final corner. Here comes Marcus Ambrose. His third Nations Round Series win. Great job. So proud of you. Thanks, Frank. the legend, buddy. Logano second, Harvick, Brad Keselowski. And then in fifth place, it is Kyle Busch. And there is Ron Fellows coming across the stripe to take over the sixth position. Nelson P.K. Jr. finished seventh. Good job. And here's the other battles as they're coming around towards the finish line. Who gets eighth? It'll be Jacques Villeneuve. And then crossing the stripe, Stephen Wallace in ninth, and Michael McDowell in tenth. And even further back, look at this, Mike Wallace 
They're not finished racing. And Michael and that, these guys, and this is for oh, position. Look at that, going way wide. One more corner to go. This is for 18th on the racetrack. And it looks like Mike Wallace is going to hold him off. Great race, guys. Way to battle it all the way till the end. See Mark oh, Sam Brown down. He's down in front break. No problem, brother. Three. Green, white, checker. The green flag, they race. If they get back around to the white without a caution, the next flag ends the race. Who's it going to be? Oh, uh, Ambrose spun the tire stump. Brad Keselowski going by him. Kyle Bush lights him up. He's oh, he's the flag. Right. Here comes Brad. Contact. Keselowski is through the lead. Wow. Here comes Montoya, but he's not able to hold off Kyle Bush. Okay, this, this interlude is going to be exciting up here. And that's going to have to really guard. A wiggle, a wobble. Uh, here comes Ambrose hard in there. the bottom. A little bump there, a little nudge. Got to know Kyle Bush is going to be close clear, here, clear, too. Clear. I'll tell you what. Ambrose better get down in this corner good or Brad's going to be all over him. Maybe a little bump right here from Brad. Al Bush coming hard. Oh, he's still sideways. White flag. Bring it One lap to go. Next round ends the race. Do they have enough fuel to come back around and finish it? Kyle Busch looking to get back around Keselowski. Ambrose is your winner. And Tony Stewart is up against the guardrail. Wow. What an Congratulations, sir, Ambrose. You are officially a winner in the NASCAR Next Cup. Somebody might want to give that guy a brand update. <laughs> now in the sprint jump summer showdown. Oh. Awesome job, buddy. I'm proud of you. I am so, so proud of you. The crowd comes to their feet one more time. Three laps to go when we get the green flag. They make their way down and... Again, the starter's holding on and holding on. It's a late start. It is, and he finally gives them the green flag. Hang on. And the top ten are going to make it through. Sadler gets bumped out. Oh, you see Michael Dowell out in that speedy drive, guys. No grip out there. Now Stevens moves up to third. It is Ambrose out in front of Tagliani. Stephen Wallace with what would be a career best run if he can hang on to that position. Boy, McDowell really got himself in a bad position by being on the outside with all that speedy drive. He saw his car slipping and sliding. Stephen got underneath him and got going. Another clean start, guys, from turn one and two. It surprises the heck out of us, doesn't it? It we does me. We were expecting worse. Let's give the guy in fifth place a ring of the bell because Brian Scott. Whoa, whoa look out. McDowell is he get in off the course. dirt and almost got so loose and turned it around. He saves it nicely. That was a big save. He had one tire in the grass. 
Brian, it's a hard way to break. Brian Scott has one top five in his entire nationwide career. Here he is on a road course, and there he is running in fifth. And there's Eric Almarola with his string of top ten still going strong as he is at a, a good run. Like, look at this. The 32 of Luke oh. Storch goes around. Bad for our point guy. He had come so far. He was second to points just then, guys, by two points behind Ricky Stenhouse. This is going to hurt him big time. Drop to the back of the McDowell field. making a pass here. Taking a peek on the inside of Stephen Wallace as they go into 13. Can he make it stick? Little contact up over the curbs. They both survive. Well, that's as good as that can turn out. You see Stephen choosing to block a little on the inside. Position himself for turn one. Two laps remaining on this 2.7 mile circuit. Wallace trying to hold off Scott. Looks like there was a little contact there. Yeah, courtesy of the uh, bumper cam, there was no doubt about it. <laughs> well, you can tell the intensity heating up. Oh, Ricky, Ricky Stenhouse, Stenhouse goes around. That was our point leader right there. That so, is great for Reed Sorensen. We've got a race again here, guys. And he's got smoke out that right side. Is it a tire rub? Remember the fact that the Roush engines, they've had some problems lately. I think that's tire rub. I think you're right. I think, I think it is. is. Boy, falling apart for a lot of the points contenders here late in the race. Elliot Sadler, he's got, he dropped to 12. Marcus Ambrose doesn't know all the excitement that is going on behind him. And look at this. Tied for second, oh. 17 back would be Sorensen and Sadler. Scott Speed overheating big time, guys. Shooting a lot of water out of that 33 car. You think he might have some grass on the front of the grill? He's yeah. Got, he's got a lap and a half to go, and I guarantee he's not going to stop the pull at all. The driver's issue melts down. That's all you can do, Mark. You're exactly right. Danica Patrick locked up. Yeah, he's got brake issues still again. Still. Oh, right into Ron Fellow. She hit him accidentally. It's a tough part of the course. She was running 13th. Has a good run going despite all the brake issues. She's going to lose a couple of more spots here. And at Marty, it looks like a right rear corner panels tore up big time. And there's still problems for Stenhouse. Remember, we talked oh, about how... Oh, it is how... motor. It is motor. I was wondering, guys. You're right. Yeah, it's coming up hard. Turn into turn 10. And we've got a full course caution. No. With, unbelievable. But the final lap is out. No. We've got the white flag Check flying, it. Marty. Check we've got the it. white yes. flag. Don't have to worry about it. No. It is a final lap. So it's going to be a full run to the finish. Yeah, Marcus is just saying to himself, all i got to do is have a solid lap, no mistakes, hit my marks, don't miss those chips. These things are the second nature for him. Oh, and that turn 14 is what got him a couple years now. When he hits the rump with the bump right there, he got him out of control. Okay, He's got to be thinking that. Let's give a little credit to the, uh, the, the substitute driver while he was gone. A friend growing up, Owens. Yep, good drive he did for Marcos, getting that car set up. Owen Kelly did Owen a great Kelly, job. Yeah, Owen absolutely. Kelly. And that was Marcus' decision. Just a few corners left in the Napa 200. And the demons for Marcus Ambrose in less than two weeks will be taken care of on both the cup and nationwide level. Okay, this is a tough part right here into turn 10. A lot of drivers trying to outbreak each other into here. Just get through this corner. He does a great job, Marcos does. Alex Tagliani there in second with McDowell close by in third. Stephen Wallace still in a career best position of fourth. And Brian Scott with a sneaky little run. He never really cracked the top line until the end. What about Alex Tagliani? Take a look at uh, Michael McDowell trying to make a pass. Like, he's better. Gets back in line, guys. Marcos Ambrose went through a lot to get here. He's thinking right now it was all worth it. Takes the corner nice and smooth this time. Comes down the long front straightaway. Brian and, Scott. Oh, turns. Brian Scott gets awesome turned. Awesome job, Marcus Ambrose. Awesome job, son. Nice job, man. And Marcus oh, Ambrose oh, gets the win. Exciting run. And we make it without rain, guys. This is a very entertaining race. Great race, great race. Brian Scott ends up coming in in 12th position after the last corner spin. And look how wounded that car is. Awesome job, guys. Two laps to go. I guess last the car did come back to him. It's just maybe a little uh, too little too late. See that, Van Bruce happens to make a little bit of a mistake. 
That'll be there to take advantage. Right there's a little bit of a mistake on the nine car. Well, it's a mistake. It's, it just looks like his handling's going away on him now. Bobbing and weaving around a lot. Lap and a half to go. Keselowski aggressively after Ambrose. Here he goes for second. We got position on him in the right place. He made a great move through the inner loop. He slid that thing through there and jumped back in the gas. He could see that Ambrose's car was really going away. I mean, that nine's bobbing around. You I see the 18 moving around. around. Yeah. Like he might be out of fuel. That's exactly what I was thinking, Andy. I was wondering if he was running out of fuel here. Coming to the white flag. I'll tell you, the two cars close that gap. I don't know if he's sad or if he thinks he might have a flat tire or something like that. He's really moving the car around. It doesn't look very stable right now. One lap to go. Kyle Busch, defensive line into turn one. There's something wrong with the 18. Now Ambrose trying to get second from Keselowski while he tries to get the lead from Kyle. Oh, he's he's turn in the S's. And Clyde got it. Dangerous spot on the track for Kyle to be sideways. Looks like he gets off to the guardrail. No caution yet. Here's the race for the lead. Because has got damage on the left front. Is the tire going to make it all the way around? And will the nine help him? Oh, Everybody's in the right. grass. No, you're clear. Dig, dig, dig. That dig, might dig. have been the race right there. We'll no. see. No, Keselowski's slower. Because he's got a problem. Trying to stay with Ambrose. Two final corners. Do they use the bumpers? A nod, a push. Can Ambrose save it? To the checkered flag. Who gets here first? Clear, clear. Ambrose, back to nine. Keselowski, two. Final corner. Marcus Ambrose is going to win at Watkins Glen in a remarkable last lap turn of events. Gordon in the wall. That's off the final corner. past Kyle in the late laps and uh, take no prisoners in doing so. I'm not going to speak for Kyle, but I'm going to be willing to wager he hasn't forgotten that. That battle for third and fourth back there might mean more than just a battle for third and fourth if Kyle's able to get there. And by the way, don't, don't forget that Ambrose and Bush tangled early in the race too, back at lap five at the inner loop. That was with Kyle trying to make the pass on Ambrose. Yeah, he's got a problem. Don't get greedy here. Just reel in here. Well, Kyle has chopped down an awful lot of Ambrose's lead. They're coming to the white flag. See Keselowski back there, he was off the track trying to make a big run on Logano for that third spot. Lap traffic ahead. One lap to go to settle it at Watkins Glen. Now where does he catch this lap track? This is up through the S's and slows him down any at all. That's going to give Kyle Busch a run at him at the inner loop. Jeffrey Earnhardt of the four, the next car ahead. It looks like that might just happen, too. Kyle's hanging it 
out there, trying to catch him. I think that was everything that Kyle had right there. Going to be hard to get it from here if Ambrose doesn't have a problem. Final two corners ahead. Consecutively that he's entered, he's taken home the checkered flag and trophy. Marcus Ambrose wins at Watkins Glen. Oh my! Oh, that was a dive. Thank you, guys. Woo. Awesome drive, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks all the nine, the 43 nationwide guys. Thanks for everything. That guy is amazing. Yeah, how big a boost does that have to give him for tomorrow? I mean, he all... Ah, Thanks, guys! Big win for Ambrose. Big win for Richard Petty Motorsports today, Mike. A gigantic win for Richard Petty Motorsports. See if we can get a word with the kid.